Howdy Hexers, welcome back to Hex Hunter. I'm Mokog, and today we're going to be going over a little bit more economy. So recently on the forums, Chark decided he wanted to release more data, and we've got more updated charts and tables and spreadsheets and dry, wonderful economic things related to Hex. So we're going to be taking a look specifically at this new data set. It's all fresh data, though there's no old data, so Let's quickly jump over to that because that's where the meat of this is and we'll do some comparisons back to the auction house. So as y'all know, everything is dropped down into spreadsheets, we've got summations of data, we've got prices, we've got the whatever day it occurred on, plus the, the moving averages, and we have our similar trends, we have our platinum trends that go, we have them all nice and spiffified a little bit here. So each of the orange dots is whatever the price was for that day, and then we've got the trends going, our ups and our downs. Uh, we see we actually have a little bit more consistent volume occurring on some cards now, and that's actually really good and really interesting. It's good because we see a, a little bit higher stabilization in some of the values, but they're still pretty low per day when you're looking at the platinum side, where some of your highest ones is you're getting 12 transactions on one of the more popular legendaries for the day and then some where there's no transactions occurring at all for a particular day. But what's really interesting is that we know fairly recently that the uh, more players were allowed into the beta and we started seeing an increased amount of transactions during that time and a little more stabilization. So we've got some good data running along here and it's gonna have some wonderful analysis. Now this time, we actually started taking a look at gold data. Yay, gold data. So there's a lot of different uh, all sorts of different cards available for the gold data but one of the things we have to really make and take into consideration is that not every card is selling every day for our gold data so we have to take a look and we want to try to find a, a good card bombsmith bombsmith is a fantastic card that will allow us to have a really good understanding of maybe some of what's going on in the gold market so let's take a look we'll roll on down to bombsmith bombsmith common card uh, looks like it's got some decent values going. We've uh, filtered and brought out a lot of the noise that occurs that's occurring with the trading faction or trading functionality that's being pushed through on the gold data. So we take a look at the trends and oh my god it's everywhere! Uh, so this is kind of what we're seeing with what goes on with the gold data. We have very little transactions occurring and then all of a sudden our transactions by comparison go through the roof. This is really common in the gold data because we have the first portions of a transition occurring with gold. So starting on 9.4 we started getting a bunch of new players and they uh, started patching in the 100 gold per win improving grounds. So what you end up having is you start end up having the gold market now that it has a consistent income no longer really based to the fluctuations of tournament winnings all of a sudden it starts acting like a market. So you really don't have a market here, so to speak. Nothing that you can track or trend. You see everything is all over the place. It's all crazy. And then right around here at the beginning of September, we start getting something that looks like some organization. So when you have data like this, it's called Wild Wild West. Do, 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 do. And that's something that we want to keep in mind when we're looking. So the next month's set of data will probably have something really powerful when it comes to say to gold by card. Right now we have evidence of transition and that's a fantastic thing. One of the other things because we have better gold data now is we can start taking a look at the trends that are occurring with the valuation of gold. And valuation of gold is essentially how much gold do you get for essentially one platinum. And one of the things I was taking a look at is if you took a look at the average after you scrubbed the data you, your average ended up being about 100 gold to a platinum. It was a little under for the mass average. But when we started taking a look at these by rarity, we got a lot of different action going on. So we have these done by rarity. So we have commons, uncommons, rares, and legendaries. And for commons, what we see is that we have a fairly stable trend line with a big spike that pops up and then uh, a little bit of an increasing value and with a bit of a correction. When we take a look at uncommons, we seem to see what appears to be a fairly downward trending line, which is very interesting when you have a stable line in your commons. But this line is continued when we start taking a look at the trend line here for rares, 
also going down, looking like it's trending towards this 100 level. But when you take a look at what the effect on uncommons, we see that that's trending down to below 100. The value for commons, it looks like the conversion ratio for commons seems to be trending at around 40. Now we take a look at legendaries. Legendary values are all over the place, but they are still moderately trending downwards. So it looks like they're trending up for the first few days of this data set, and then they take a turn and they're trending downwards again with a bit of a correction occurring towards the end. All of these taken together do get us somewhere a little bit north of 100 for the 100 gold to a single platinum. But the effects of these are very different when you take into account the effects the auction house forces certain price floors onto commons, uncommons, so on and so forth. So if we take a look, we wanted to take a look at gold. So let's switch on over to our auction house. Let's take a quick look at what we've got for gold. We want to take a look at commons. Uh, do we want to do about it? We'll take, go ahead and take a look at buyouts. That'll give us an idea. So we have one end. Now we want to take a look at the southern end. So for our commons, we're seeing about 100 gold. But if we flip this over to platinum, about four pennies. So if we take if we take this into consideration, you know, four pennies at this current point, some of these look like they're and we've actually had a, an adjustment downward for commons, which I find fantastic for our new players. But what we're seeing once we switch between the two is about 25 to 40, which is understandable for where our trend line was. It's a little bit below, which is actually not a terrible aspect of it. Uh, the lower the number for gold to platinum is, the easier it is for new players to be able to acquire that level of card. And when we take a look at uncommons for our gold, we see that we have a jump. So some of the lowest priced uncommons are sitting anywhere at 350 gold, 475. And if you get deeper and deeper and you start seeing that when you get higher and higher quality of the commons, their prices start shooting up dramatically. So now the minimum platinum price is going to be minimum 10. Uh, generally, they will be purchased for about 11 platinum. So if you take any of the values that we were finding on gold, go ahead and divide it by 11. Let's go ahead and bring our gold back up and we'll go fairly deep into a decent uncommon. Manti Elder Druid is a pretty good example. So for 599 gold buyout, take the amount of platinum, it would be that one's about 54, which is the towards the lower end of what we were seeing our uncommons trend to. We're not, it's actually interesting that we're beginning to see a deflationary effect with the gold that's coming in. It tells you that we still have more, going, more gold going out of the system than we have coming into the system. Every time you get gold as a new player, you have more purchasing power, which allows you to get better cards, and that is very beneficial. But we start seeing this still get really skewed when we start taking a look at rare prices. So rare prices are up in the thousands of gold. So a player would have to win 35 matches before they could do a buyout price of a, an Ingenuity engine or 40 matches before they could buy out this Gigantify. The a price of Gigantify is going to be about 31 platinum. So if we take in this case the 4,000 for Gigantify and we divide it by 31, we're going to get 129 platinum or 129 gold to a single platinum which is also uh, not the lowest end of the, the data we've seen from the 12th, but it's definitely continuing that lower trend line going down. So even the rares are beginning to see this. Legendaries, legendaries are always going to be volatile. And the biggest reason they're going to be volatile is because they tend to be powerful, uh, harder to come by, very chasey, and also just cool and more numismatic in their values. So you want to get some really high valuations. So one of the cards, Cosmic Transmogrifier, that's actually a really good example. The Cosmic Transmogrifier, one of these can be gotten for essentially 40,000 gold. Well, that is 400 wins. So 400 wins in Proven Grounds, and you can have a Cosmic Transmogrifier. That is patently ridiculous. That is, you're not going to be able to say that up. You need to be playing tournaments to start getting 20k gold. And this is essentially saying two tournament wins is worth a Cosmic Transmogrifier as far as the gold valuations go. 
Uh, that seems patently ridiculous, except when you take into account of all the rares that you get from your gold value, you have a 1 in 11 chance of getting any particular legendary from a fresh pack. And then on top of that, to get a specific one, you are paying somewhat of a premium. But if you take, we'll go ahead and round it up for simplicity purposes. You take this 40,000 gold and its average price on the auction house now is about 130 platinum. That's 300 platinum to, uh, or 300 gold to a single platinum. Very much bucks the trend, very well throws everything off. So legendaries are very rough on being able to calculate the comparisons because you're not getting the same kind of traffic. Their rarity is up there. It's more like trying to put a valuation on an art piece than trying to put a valuation on like corn or wheat. It's just not the same. So what we can tell so far is that when we flip on back over to take a look at our data, commons, uncommons, and rares are going to be within the realm of possibility for free-to-play players because as of this point in time, the way the economy is presently trending, we are getting valuations moving towards helping out new players. I am a big fan of this because we need this kind of gold deflation to make the Proving Grounds experience more appealing. When you hit a game and you win, you feel as though that you can go pick out a card from the auction house and progress your deck some. And that feeling cannot be underexpressed. Turn that first couple hundred gold into uh, you know, a decent upgrade if you want to run here and we want to check out gold and sapphire. So we want to find an, maybe a brand new common that we could get, toss something with some buyouts. You know, you may not want to be putting your gold into a cavern commando, which there are quite a few, but a good example is here. Mystic of the Tranquil Dream is not a bad card, especially for our new deck because of the power you can get from utilizing that minor socket. And you can come in and you can just start picking up some of these cards for 100, 200 gold and you will slowly begin expanding your collection and you only need four of them so you only need to spend a certain amount and this is how you will slowly build up your commons you will be able to move on over to your uncommons uh, after a while after you start building up and all of this you are not paying a dime for when you first start and that is a very good and wonderful thing especially after you complete your starter trials now, other cards, like if you wanted to get a Polymorph Dingler, it's going to take you a little bit more time. Uh, the Uncommons are definitely showing preferential treatment, but certain cards are worth it. A Wizard of the Silver Talon can win you games, and more games you win is going to be more gold. And so the free-to-play experience on the PvP side is definitely going to be a different tier than the pay-to-play, uh, pay-to-compete experience that we will be experiencing on the PvP side. But you can eventually work your way up there with enough games. 100 gold to win will definitely pay off now as long as we have a market that continues to trend in a deflationary cycle for gold. So I want to thank you all for watching today. We've got, a, we've got this data available up on the forums. If you need some specific data or have any questions, don't hesitate to send me a message on either Twitter or YouTube. You can send me a message on Twitch or the forums. Really easy to get a hold of. I read everything that comes in. When the volumes are low, it's very easy to uh, make sure that I can get back to everyone. So I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure that you like and subscribe this video. Go ahead and hit us up on Twitch. We're going to begin streaming a lot more often. Stay tuned in for the General's Tent where we'll have other observations uh, go up about the economy. And I want you all to have a fantastic Hexy day.